This is a direct continuation from part one on the topic of who is God. So we are going through the characteristics of God. We have mentioned that he is the greatest possible being, that he is a necessary being, he is self-existent or independent, he is personal and omnibenevolent. We now move on to the characteristic of being immutable or incorruptible. God is immutable in moral and metaphysical perfection. That is, God is unchanging. God does not change in terms of his moral actions. He is consistent. His metaphysical perfection never wanes. And since God is a perfect being, of course, any significant moral or metaphysical change would be for the worse. So that is why God does not change and God is incorruptible, cannot be corrupted in any sense of that word. Now, a clarification, and from my perspective at least, others might disagree, that he may change in knowledge, that is, in his awareness of time. So he may know uh, that it is raining in Macomb at one point in time, and then know that it's not raining in Macomb, at another point of time. I'm allowing for that, that's a little controversial, we won't go into that here. Malachi 3.6 gets to the major ways that we already mentioned, the moral metaphysical ways, I the Lord do not change, it says. God is creator, ex nihilo, and sustainer. I'm considering this one characteristic. They could be separated as two separate characteristics, but God created the universe out of nothing. That's what the ex nihilo phrase means, from nothing. So God is creator, and also part of being creator is an extension of that. He is the present sustainer of all created things. And I, I view that as creation that is kind of a an ongoing process we might say but it's a sustainer of of what exists god is a sustainer of what exists and he is the only true creator he created the world the universe everything in it all things seen unseen ideas principles dimensions measures light darkness time the awareness of it, all of these things are created by God. Now, God continues to sustain all of creation at all times. So as I am speaking, God is continuing to sustain the oxygen, the breath that's in my lungs, the blood flowing through my veins to maintain my existence. Were he to withdraw his hand from me, I would instantly die and disappear where he withdraw, to withdraw his hand from creation, nothing would continue to exist. We see this, of course, in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, but we see it also in Colossians 1.16, where it's actually talking about Jesus, and in the New Testament, Jesus is identified with the word, or logos, and we have Proverbs that talk about how the logos, or wisdom, the, the word would have been a Hebrew word for wisdom, uh, was there in the presence during creation. And we have the verse from Colossians, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And so he has ultimate superiority, right? uh, ultimate authority over everything that exists because he is creator and sustainer of everything that exists. Extending on that idea of having authority, God is omnipotent or all-powerful. A definition that I'm using, I borrowed from several different philosophers to put these things together, but at any given time, what it means for God to be omnipotent is that he can perform any action that is logically consistent, 
consistent with the past up to that time, and consistent with God's perfect nature. All three of those things. So in a sense, you might say this is just the, the boundaries on what we mean by omnipotence, right? Somebody might say, God can do anything whatsoever. That's what it means to be all powerful. I think it's more coherent to think of omnipotence in this way. So he can grant power to others. He gives humans great authorities in, in treating other humans in the creation. But it's always God who remains in ultimate control. So we see from Matthew 19, 26, for example, and looking at them, Jesus said to them, with people, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. We see this in the Psalms 2, 136, verse 6, the Lord does whatever pleases him. He is all powerful. He does whatever he wishes. He is not constrained by any limitation whatsoever. I would like to take a little more time on this characteristic of omnipotence and, and have some clarification here. Omnipotence cannot mean doing the logical impossible. That, that doesn't make sense. If logically impossible things, and we have to use quotations there, are not really things that exist at all. So round squares, for example, are logically impossible. That these things, again, you have to use quotation marks, right? These things are not our concern. What, what they are, are, are questions like this. Could God build a rock, make a rock so big that he cannot pick it up, right? If he can do everything, why can't he do that? Well, a, a way of thinking about that question might be to put it in a different way. Ask it this way. Could a, an omnipotent being, so just thinking through the characteristics of what it would mean to be an omnipotent being. Could an omnipotent being do that? Well, the answer seems to be more clear. The rock existing is not a logical possibility, right? It's an incoherent string of words. It doesn't have any real meaning, just like round square, right? You can put those words together, but they really don't have a meaning. You cannot imagine a round square. You cannot draw a round square. You cannot even conceive of such a thing because the definition itself involves a contradiction. So such things are not really anything at all. So it's not really anything that God cannot do. Would an inability of lie, to lie be a weakness? So for example, we say God cannot lie. So somebody might say, ah, I thought he was omnipotent. He could do anything. Why couldn't he lie? Well, first of all, we qualified that on the previous slide with he, he does what is consistent with his nature. And an inability to, to lie, if we think about it this way, would that be a weakness? Right? And the answer is clearly no. Consider the phrase, imagine I'm going to play tennis against Serena Williams. And somebody says, she cannot lose. And they mean it very literally, which would be a reasonable claim to make, right? She couldn't possibly lose. Now, is that a weakness? Because that's something she can't do? Of course not, right? It just means she's, she's so much greater at playing tennis than I would ever be, that there's not a, any way that I could possibly win. We see this in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 6. Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. God has the authority over all creation, can do whatever he wants within those parameters that we talked about. Another characteristic of God is that God is omniscient or all-knowing. What does that mean? God knows all propositions that are true, and God never believes anything that is false. I think that's a pretty fair definition. We could go into more details, but that will suffice for now. Consider Proverbs 15.3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good. God knows what's going on everywhere, right? God is aware of it. 
or Hebrews 4, 13. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. He is aware of everything that is going on. He is all-knowing. God is eternal or everlasting. Now, philosophers make a distinction between those two concepts, so I'm affirming at least one of those is true. It depends on how you think about it. Either God has existed throughout all of time and will never fail to exist. That's what we might call everlasting. So God has always existed at every point in time and will always exist at every point in time and will never fail to exist. You could understand being eternal in that way. Or you might think of God as timeless. This is, this is very popular uh, among both uh, Baptists and Catholics in the, the theology that they teach. Um, that is, God is kind of outside of time, right? God exists outside the constraints of time so that all times are fully present to him. So two different ways of understanding this. Philosophers argue about what's the best way to understand it, and obviously it has to do with philosophy of time and the nature of what it is to be the greatest possible being. Isaiah 26, 4 says, Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Of course, we have many other verses that describe the eternity of God. The last characteristic to put on our list is omnipresent. That is, God is everywhere. He is here now. He is there with you. He is over there where anything else is. Now, God's not a spatial being. He doesn't have spatial dimensions, but he's present in all places. Now, you, you can understand that in a few different ways. He's currently sustaining every location in the universe. We can think of it that way. So God is everywhere in that sense. I like using omnipresent uh, in that sense. We have Psalm 139, seven through nine, affirming this. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I send to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. And that chapter goes on to talk about how God is everywhere that we could ever possibly be. He is omnipresent. Now, we have 11 characteristics, and I have a mnemonic device for remembering these attributes of God. I put it into a sentence here, God now sees people over in Canton, Ohio, or everywhere. Yes, everywhere, right? So God, the, the G, greatest possible being, now and necessary being, sees S, self-existent, P, people, personal, over, omnibenevolent, in, immutable or incorruptible. Canton would be creator or sustainer. Um, Ohio, one of the um, omni, omnipotent, another omni, or omni, omniscient, and then everywhere for eternal or everlasting. And then I just put everywhere exclamation point to remind us of the last characteristic of being omnipresent. So that's a mnemonic uh, device to remember these characteristics of God.